What is up people? In today's video, I'm going to be talking to you about the question Unlike the arts, such as writing or music, math lacks the capacity for creativity. Now a lot of you when you get questions like this in your A-levels, you look at the paper and you start thinking, how am I supposed to do this question? What do I know about math? I'm not a math genius. I didn't join the math club. Why did they even put a question like this in the A-levels? Right? I'm here today to tell you that you don't have to be a math genius to attempt a question like that. Some of you freak out, your brains go blank. Today is the day you realize that questions like this are just made for you to make a killing. Now, how are we going to do that? Let's take a look at the question. You know that you have to talk about two things, art and math. And then you also have to talk about creativity or rather the capacity for creativity. What you don't have to talk about is complicated math theorems like the theory of relativity. If you want to, you can, but you don't really have to go into drive deep down into the details. This is general paper. This is not specific paper. You don't have to know every single detail about the theory of relativity to be able to talk about it, right? So let's, let's first talk about the easy part. You know, when they say, unlike the arts, such as writing or music, you don't really have to go into deep detail about writing or music. They're just trying to tell you that art can be, a, art can be writing, can be music, could be the humanities, geography, history, literature. It doesn't have to be, you know, like paintings. You don't have to paint stuff for that to be art. So that, that, this is the examiner trying to give you some help about you know, the context of what art means. So you can interpret art in which, whichever way you like. Don't limit yourself to just paintings. So let's address the obvious, that art is creative, right? Everybody thinks that art is creative, you know, create, it, it has the capacity for creativity and they're not wrong. You can see from uh, real life examples of writing such as Game of Thrones, I'm sure some of you read that. You can, you know, you can think about Harry Potter, you can think about J.R. Tolkien, J.R., J, J, that guy who wrote the book about the, uh, the hobbits and the wizards and Lord of the Rings, yes, that's right, Lord of the Rings, right? It's pretty creative, a lot of capacity for imagination and all that. And if we talk about music, I'm sure a lot of you out there listen to K-pop and it's pretty creative the way these Koreans do it. If you don't listen to K-pop, I am sure there is one Korean kind of music thing that you have seen before and it's called Gangnam Style. Everyone has heard of the Gangnam Style, unless you're living under a rock. Right? And you can see how creative it is. It's some, sometimes it's so creative, I don't even know what's going on. Right? So here in a very simple examples of uh, how arts can have the capacity for creativity. I'm sure you do not have a problem talking about how arts can have the capacity for creativity. What you want to know is how math can have the capacity for creativity. I will tell you this. I got to tell you this. Math can be used Creative, creatively in so many ways. You ever heard a phrase? Have you ever heard the phrase? There are three kinds of lies. Lies, then lies, and statistics. Statistics, as you probably know if you take H2 math, is a kind of math. Well, you're telling me, yeah, no shit, Einstein. Statistics is math. Yes. And statistics can also be used creatively to lie to people. Right? That's why they have this phrase, lie. Lies, then lies, and statistics, because statistics can be a huge lie. I'll give you a simple example. When I was your age, when I was in junior college, I used to do really badly in math. I was arts, I was a humanities student. And, and when the, re the examination reports came back, I would go home, I'd tell, I, I'd tell my mom, say, you know, look, mom, I, I failed math. I failed math, I failed my math exam, but statistically, Everyone in my class, in the humanities class, failed math. What I didn't tell her was that I was in the bottom 25 percentile of people who failed math. Now, with this new information, this new mathematical information, do you realize how creatively, creatively I've bent the truth? Therein lies the potential, the capacity for creativity. You can use statistics to lie to people. I told my mom, Everyone failed math. She said, oh, okay, everyone failed math. It, mu it must have been a difficult test. You, you know, you were excused. 
what I did tell her was that I was in the bottom 25%. So there were like 75% of the cohort that did better than me. This is a simple real life example of my own. I'm trying to use that to illustrate to you how math could be used creatively. I am very sure in the real life day to day scenario, there are a lot of other people, politicians, environmental activists, any, anyone who wants to sound credible and convincing who is creatively using statistics and math to lie to other people or to prove their points. You don't really have to lie all the time. You can use it to prove your point, right? Attached in the link at the bottom of the video, I attached a, a TED talk about how this German guy used statistics to creatively prove his point about good TED talks and bad TED talks and how statistics could be used to lie to people. If you want more inspiration about how statistics could be used creatively, watch that video. Now, so we've talked about how statistics could be used creatively, that creative capacity. Do you remember the 2008 financial crisis? I'm sure you don't because you, uh, you probably didn't get put out of a job, unlike the other millions of Americans and people all around the world who lost money in the 2008 financial crisis. And do you remember what was the source of all that crisis? Structured products, financial derivatives. And what it is, is that they basically took a whole bunch of mortgage loans, uh, basically housing loans, packaged it, made it look very premium grade. They used mathematics to make it look like a fantastic financial product with great returns. And they sold it to the general public. Therein lies another creative use of math, creative capacity to create structured products, financial products that can be sold to people for a lot of money up to the point where it all goes boom and the financial, the economy goes down. But the money's already been made and the math was already creatively used to create these structured and financial products. Now, if you aren't already convinced, let me give you another example about how math can be used creatively in architecture and the design of buildings. We don't have to look so far. Just look in your backyard, we have the Marina Bay Sands, the world's highest infinity pool at 200 meters above sea levels, 57 stories above ground. Do you think it took a lot of creative capacity to design a structure like that to create a swimming pool that has so much water weight from there and to put it 200 meters above the ground in the sky? You think, you think some simple, they didn't have to be creative with their math to create something like that? Yes, it's true. Mathematics has to be rigorous, it has to be structured, it has to be 2 plus 2 equals 4. That is basic mathematics. Yes, it's very structured, it's very rigorous. But who said basic art doesn't have structure? Who said that basic, basic uh, geography or history doesn't have structure and rules? They do. Any kind of education has basic rules, basic structure, but it's what you do with the mathematics that count. Did you use your mathematics creatively to solve a problem in the world today? Right? So now, I'm sure by now you're already more or less convinced that mathematics can be uh, created. By the way, by the way, the guy who gave the TED talk on lies, then lies, and statistics, his name is Sebastian Wernick. I, just in case you wanted to know his name, it's in the link below. So, we've talked about the potential, the capacity for creativity in arts. We've talked about the capacity for creativity in math. What you need to do now is you need to conclude. Some people would say that arts, very, they have a lot of potential for creativity. Some people would say that math has a lot of potential for creativity. I have a different opinion. I believe that even arts require the use, the creative use of math. The integration of art and mathematics creates things of supreme beauty. Now, why do I say that? Think about some of the greatest artworks of all time. The Mona Lisa, the uh, Da Vinci, the painting of uh, Leonardo da Vinci, the painting of the Vivichuan man, right? What is it in these paintings, so-called these creative artworks, that made it so beautiful, that made it so valuable? 
in each of these artworks, there was a mathematical principle concept called the golden ratio. And the golden ratio is 1 is to 1.618 something something something. Look it up on Wikipedia. My main point is that through the integration of mathematics, art was made more beautiful, art was made more creative. So how can we then say that art, that math has no capacity for creativity? Artists themselves use math creatively to create some of their best works that mankind has ever seen. So think about that. The next time you look at a question like that at your A-levels and you think, how am I supposed to do this? There you have it, your answers. The links are in the video description below. So if you need more help, just go down, check out the links and you'll find what you need to find.